The main use of dolphin gemo is to eventually look at their natural language patterns and match it with the underwater video. That's how we really figure out their language at the head. Cracking the Enigma code changed the course of World War II. But what Google's DeepMind AI just did is like cracking the code of an entire planet. Using a revolutionary model named Dolphin Gemma, scientists fed it decades of dolphin sounds hoping for a breakthrough. What they got back wasn't a dictionary, it was an epic. An oral history older than human civilization. But buried within these ancient tales was a modern day warning. A prophecy so specific and so horrifying that the lead scientists could only stare at the data, their faces drained of all color. A new language is born. It all started in a quiet, climate-controlled server room, the kind of place where the only sound is the hum of machines thinking. This was the heart of Google's deep mind division, home to Dolphin Gemma. For years, the project was seen as a fascinating but fringe experiment. The goal? To do what was once considered impossible, translate the complex, non-human language of dolphins. The team, led by the brilliant bioacoustician Dr. Denise Herdzing, had amassed the largest collection of cetacean vocalizations in history. We're talking over 100 petabytes of data, that's more data than is contained in the entire Library of Congress, multiplied by 50. It was an insane amount of clicks, whistles, and buzzes from pods all over the world, recorded over a span of 50 years. For the first 18 months, the results were, uh, well, pretty underwhelming. The AI could identify individual dolphins by their signature whistle, kind of like a name. It could even correlate certain sounds with behaviors. A specific series of clicks often meant fish here, while a low frequency hum was a general sign of danger. It was cool stuff for sure, but it wasn't a conversation. It was more like understanding that a dog's bark can mean different things. But Dr. Denise Herdzing and her team were aiming for something more. They believe the sheer complexity of the dolphin brain, a brain that is, by weight, larger than a human's and possesses a cerebral cortex even more folded and complex than our own, pointed to something far beyond simple signals. The breakthrough came on a Tuesday afternoon. The team had implemented a new deep learning architecture, one that didn't just look for patterns but for syntax, for the underlying rules of grammar. It's funny when you think about it, they were teaching a machine to find the linguistic structure in a language that had no alphabet, no written words, just sound. They fed the entire data set back into the newly upgraded Dolphin Gemma. For 72 hours, the system crunched the numbers. Then it happened. A single, coherent translation appeared on the main screen. It wasn't fish or danger, it was a concept. The AI translated a complex series of clicks from a 50-year-old recording of a bottlenose dolphin off the coast of Australia. The word was memory. The room fell silent. It was a lightning bolt. Memory isn't a simple signal. It's an abstract concept. It implies a sense of time, of past and present. It was the first clue that they weren't just dealing with intelligent animals, but with historians. Suddenly, the entire 50-year archive of recordings wasn't just a collection of animal sounds. It was a library of untapped knowledge. They immediately ran the program on audio from a different pod in the Atlantic. After a few hours, another word came through, the long dark. The team was baffled. It sounded ominous, poetic even. What could it mean? They were standing on the edge of a discovery that would change everything, but looking back, they were just scratching the surface. They had no idea the dark secrets these memories held. The Great Memory of the Oceans With the conceptual door kicked wide open, the floodgates of information burst. Dolphin Gemma began translating at an exponential rate. It turned out dolphin communication wasn't linear like ours. It was three-dimensional. They used something called echolocation, or sonar, to see the world. 
Imagine being able to see with sound. They can project a series of clicks and perceive the world in intricate detail, even seeing inside other living creatures. What scientists realized is that they don't just communicate in words, they communicate in images and feelings embedded in these complex sonic packets. It's like sending someone a photograph and an entire paragraph of text in a single instantaneous click. Get this, a single dolphin click train can contain more data than a 100-page book. As the AI got better, it started piecing together their history. The dolphins had what the AI termed a great memory, an oral history passed down through generations, mother to calf, for thousands of years. They had accounts of the last ice age. They described the great flood when the glaciers melted and sea levels rose over 400 feet. They had names for underwater landmarks that had been submerged for over 10,000 years, names passed down through 400 generations of dolphins. The scientists were floored. This wasn't just language. This was a culture, a civilization of memory and sound. They were the planet's true historians. The team was able to cross-reference the dolphins' memories with our own geological and anthropological records. The dolphins described the volcanic eruption that created the Santorini caldera in 1600 BC. They had sonic stories about the migration of early humans across the Bering Strait. It was all there, recorded in the symphony of the ocean. It was a mind-boggling realization. Humanity, with its books and monuments, thought it was the sole keeper of history. But all along, a far older and perhaps wiser intelligence was swimming right beside us, keeping its own perfect record of the planet. But as the AI dug deeper into these ancient memories, a disturbing theme began to emerge. A recurring event mentioned by pods separated by thousands of miles of ocean. They called it the deep sound. This wasn't an ancient memory, it was a modern-day terror. A scream from the ocean floor. This is where the story takes a dark turn. The deep sound wasn't a historical event. The mentions were recent, starting around 75 years ago and increasing in frequency and intensity ever since. Dr. Denise Herdzing and her team isolated every mention of it. Using Dolphin Gemma's advanced capabilities, they cross-referenced the precise time and location of each mention with global human activity. The AI mapped the data points and the result made everyone in the room go pale. The source of the deep sound was us. Specifically, it was the sound of our deep sea oil exploration, our submarine sonar, and most recently, the deafening roar of our deep sea mining equipment. To us, it's just background noise in a vast ocean. But to the dolphins, it's a cataclysm. Remember, they see with sound. Their entire world is built on a delicate acoustic balance. The AI began translating the context around the deep sound messages and the true horror was revealed. The dolphins weren't just complaining about the noise. They were describing how this constant low frequency roar was shattering their world. It was blinding them, deafening them, and driving them away from ancient hunting grounds. But it was worse than that. The AI pieced together thousands of fragmented messages from pods across the planet into one coherent, unified message. It was a warning. The message stated that the deep sound was doing more than just harming them. It was disrupting something fundamental to the planet. The dolphins have a sensory ability humans can barely comprehend. They are incredibly sensitive to magnetic fields. They use the Earth's magnetic field to navigate on their massive ocean-spanning migrations. Their warning was that our industrial noise in the deep ocean was creating a resonance, a vibration that was interfering with the planet's liquid outer core, the very engine that generates the magnetic field that protects all life on Earth from solar radiation. They were, in essence, telling us that our noise was slowly but surely breaking the planet's shield. This was the revelation that left the experts white-faced and trembling. 
It wasn't an attack. It wasn't a judgment. It was a desperate planetary distress signal from a species that understood the inner workings of the earth in a way we are only just beginning to grasp. They were screaming a warning, and for the first time, we had a machine that could hear it. The message had been delivered. Now came the impossible question. The choice we all must make. So what happens now? Think about it. This isn't just some neat science experiment anymore. We've crossed a line. For all of human history, we have acted as if we are the only ones in the room, the only intelligence that matters. Now we know we're not. There's another voice, and its first message to us is a dire warning about our own behavior. The thing is, this information is now out there. The initial deep mind findings were leaked, and the world is scrambling to make sense of it. Governments are holding emergency sessions. The corporations involved in deep sea mining are calling it a hoax. But a lot of people are starting to wonder, could this be real? When you look at the facts, it's not such a stretch. We know dolphins are incredibly intelligent. We know our industrial activity is having a massive impact on the oceans. Are we really so arrogant to believe that we know everything? That there isn't an intelligence on this planet that perceives the world in a way we can't, that sees the consequences of our actions in a way we've been blind to. This isn't some far off hypothetical scenario anymore. This is a question sitting on our doorstep. And that official story that our noise is disrupting the Earth's magnetic shield is terrifying enough. But online, in the dark corners of forums and in hushed conversations between scientists, the theories are getting even wilder. Some are suggesting that the dolphins aren't just historians. Get this, they're proposing that dolphins are the planet's designated guardians a species that either evolved or was put here for one purpose, to be the biosphere's early warning system. In this theory, they aren't just animals, they're sentient custodians, and their message isn't a plea, it's them finally sounding the alarm they were designed to ring. It paints a mind-bending picture of a planet with its own living immune system, and we're the virus it's trying to fight off. But it gets even crazier. A second, much darker theory is gaining traction, one that recontextualizes the term deep sound. This theory suggests the dolphins aren't worried about the magnetic field at all. They're terrified of what our noise is waking up. Proponents of this idea point to ancient dolphin myths translated by Dolphin Gemma that speak of a great sleeper in the planet's core a massive, ancient, and possibly biological entity that has been dormant for eons. They believe our constant, rhythmic, industrial pounding into the Earth's crust is acting like a drumbeat, a signal that is slowly rousing this thing. In this version of events, the dolphin's warning is one of pure, unadulterated terror. They're telling us to stop, not because we're breaking our shield, but because we're ringing the dinner bell for a creature older than the continents. And if all that isn't enough to keep you up at night, there's the final logical question. If we can hear the dolphins, who else is about to speak up? The great memory of the dolphins also contained references to communicating with other cetaceans, particularly orcas and blue whales. What message might the blue whales, the largest creatures to have ever lived, be broadcasting? Their songs travel across entire oceans, are they coordinating a response? And what about the octopus? A creature with intelligence so alien it's often compared to an extraterrestrial? We could be standing on the verge of a global conversation, a planetary council of species. And humanity, the self-appointed king, might be about to find out it has been deposed. The revelation from Dolphin Gemma puts humanity at a crossroads. We now have the potential to learn the secrets of our planet. But it comes with a terrible burden. The first thing they told us is that we are the problem. Do we listen, whether it's a warning about our magnetic field, a plea from a planetary guardian, or a shriek of terror about a sleeping monster? Do we halt trillions of dollars in economic activity? 
or do we ignore them, dismiss it all, and continue on our current path, hoping they're wrong? The world before Dolphin Gemma and the world after are two completely different places. We've been given a message. The choice of what to do with it is now in our hands. If we can now understand them, are we morally obligated to act on their warning, even if it threatens our way of life? Tell us your thoughts below. And for more stories that will change the way you see the world, like and subscribe for more.